So John Calipari kept his lips sealed over rumors that he is headed stage left away from Lexington, Kentucky, and headed to the University of Arkansas to get some of that poultry money, some of that Tyson Foods money. Uh, Calipari was spotted outside uh, near his home uh, Monday afternoon in some funny video. A local TV station in Lexington caught John Calipari walking his dog, more on that in a second, and asked him for comment. Calipari declined commenting, saying when he was asked whether he wanted to comment about the rumors, he said, no, I don't. I'm walking my dog right now. Apparently the dog did not want Calipari to answer the question. I've heard of people using kids as excuses. I've heard of people using wives as excuses. I don't recall ever hearing anyone use their dog as a reason they cannot talk to a reporter, but John Calipari did it, uh, and uh, he said, I, I, I just can't. I have no message to the fans. So let us discuss the question. Can you unravel John Calipari and his silence when asked on camera about his pending relocation to Arkansas? So I've got Mayflower, Tom Petty and Mouthpiece. And we will combine all of these things together. And we are going to make some squid, which uh, Coop ate some there, I think, in Japan. So number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Yeah. It's just for that guy that was complaining, I yell. I just want to make that. Number one. Number one. Number one. Not that I would ever be vindictive and yell on purpose just to annoy that guy. That would be inappropriate and unprofessional. So I would not do that. But uh, here's my my position on unraveling why John Calipari chose not to answer a very loquacious John Calipari uh, while walking through a nice old neighborhood in Lexington uh, decided not to answer the question. So it was not the time or place, not the proper setting. That's The, the easy answer is to say that. But Coach Cal was just casually strolling down a bunch of these big mansions there in, in town. But there's a bigger reason that he chose to not answer the question. The very first rule of being a carpetbagger, and that's what coaches are. They're carpetbaggers. They're opportunists. They go to the next town. They, it's a shell game. But the, the carpetbagger lifestyle, when you are both loved and hated at the same time, which is what John Calipari is, uh, it does not benefit him in any way of making an announcement while walking his dogs around Lexington, right? And uh, it, it's an interesting uh, situation here because uh, he didn't want to announce his departure because everything isn't done yet. You don't announce your departure until the docu sign is in, the Mayflower moving vans are moving out of town, right, moving out of town, taking all your crap to the next city. And John Calipari felt, by most accounts, unwanted. And this is an ego play. And he's got a giant ego. Most people in sports have giant egos, and John Calipari has one. So he just felt like he wasn't appreciated enough, and so he's going to move on. But he knows the moment that this becomes official, even though many Kentucky Wildcat fans loathe John Calipari, at this point because of his struggles in the NCAA tournament, he also knows that you're going to have a group of people with pitchforks and torches in front of his house, uh, very angry. Uh, how dare you? You do not leave Kentucky basketball. What's wrong with you? We're going to throw whiskey at you is what we're going to do. But the other part of the story here, the thing that I will remember most is that John Calipari was walking his dog, but he was also pushing one of his dogs. You see, John Calipari, a decorated college basketball coach, had what appeared to be a doggy stroller. John Calipari had a doggy stroller. And my my relation to this story, here's how I relate to it. I'm a little concerned because some of you that follow me on Instagram and Facebook, I've posted a few photos. I uh, We lost our dog, Bella. Uh, a while back, and we replaced Bella with two dogs. And they're the laziest dogs you could possibly have. Uh, Moxie is a bulldog that walks about five feet and you think she's going to have a heart attack. 
Okay, so that's uh, he's huffing and puffing. Uh, and then we got this other dog, which is uh, Luigi, which is a frog. So it's a mix between a French bulldog and a, a pug. We call it a frog. And a lot of energy, but yet when walking, after about a two-block walk, is ready to lay down and have a nice nap. And so it's problematic because I, I like my a lot of my exercise. And when I don't have time to go to the gym, I'll go walk, and you know, it's a nice day and all that. I'll go walk. So the wife's like, we got to get a dog stroll. So this is my future. My future is, and my near future is John Calipari. I will be John Calipari walking down the street as a middle-aged man with a dog stroller. And I, I, I don't disagree with the people goofing on, goofing on John Calipari. But I'm about to be that guy. Like I'm gonna. That's my future. My near future is walking down the street pushing my dogs. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. All right, we twist now. Page two. We twist to the report card. Now, South Carolina, their win over Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes in the national championship game, the, the numbers are in 18.7 million people. Now, keep in mind, there's hundreds of millions of people in the United States, but 18.7 million tuned in. It, the most viewed women's basketball game, we are told, of all time. The broadcast peaked at 24 million men, women, and children. Most watched college basketball game at any level since 2019 and blew away the NBA. So which way, where the fork in the road, which way does women's college hoops ratings go from here now that Caitlin Clark is exiting stage right and going off to the WNBA? Good luck to that. Uh, so my answer to that is a 1980s Tom Petty song for women's college basketball in terms of ratings Free fallen, free fallen. Yeah, because what goes up must come down again. I learned that from Einstein. 95% of this, in air quotes, movement, if you will, is a direct result of the Caitlin Clark effect. Well, she's gone. Third straight time, Caitlin Clark set a new television viewership record. Congratulations. But she leaves, and she actually has the proprietary blend, the secret sauce, Right? That was a compelling story. It caught people's attention. People fell for it. They liked it. Enough people watched it where it made an impact. But that ingredient, that secret blend of herbs and spices now goes to the WNBA. It's like putting a pin in a balloon. And I hear these these uh, these uh, yahoos, and I get emails uh, from a few of them. Well, this person's a big star. This person's a big star. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm sure they're a big star. Uh, can, and, and, and can you name one player on South Carolina? No. They won the champ. They were undefeated. You can't name one player because Caitlin Clark cut through the bullcrap, and these other players have to prove they can do it. I don't think they can. I'm a skeptic. All right, final point. So we now turn to the spawn of brawn. The spawn of brawn. What is this all about? So the spawn of brawn after one season at USC. Uh, Bronny James. He did declare for the draft. Now he left the door open to return to college life. I bring this up because someone named Shams Sharania, who's the number two NBA insider behind Woj, Shams Sharania claimed recently that the NBA views Bronny James as an NBA caliber defender right now with a high basketball IQ. Yeah. I, I go in when I meet with my boss, Don Martin. I say, you know, Don, I have a high radio IQ. And he says, that's good, Ben. Walk out of my office. Uh, get the hell out of here, you loser. Uh, but anyway, uh, how much stock do you put in Sham's report that Bronny James right now is an NBA caliber defensive player? So I'll go first. I give this one major side eye. Major side eye, right? And here's why. Because look at the source. Shams, when it comes to stories about LeBron James or anything LeBron James related, compromised. He's compromised. Now, I don't have anything against Shams, but I know how the world works. What, what, what comes into the NBA media circles about LeBron from Sham Sharania, uh, I take these stories with a grain of salt. And as we understand it, Shams has for many years been a mouthpiece, a conduit to LeBron and any messaging LeBron wants to get out. A uh, useful idiot in the media when it comes to that. And it's a scr I scratch your back, you scratch my back, where 
he takes care of LeBron, and then there are uh, people that take care of him in other departments and all that. But Sham Sharani, last I, I heard, he was represented by United Talent Agency, which is a big agency outfit which partnered years ago with Clutch Sports to form a, a sports division. And that division, the head of that division, again, last time I checked, was Rich Paul. And Rich Paul is the the, the man riding the coattails of LeBron James, right? He's the guy riding the coattails of LeBron and all that. So there's a direct, even though Shams does not directly be represented by Shams, he's under the same umbrella. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's under the same umbrella. 